when we talk about ordering smarter and not harder, I'm going to talk about standards. We all have personal standards and team standards and goals, but it is a great opportunity for us to standardize some things that will make our jobs easy, more fluid, being able to go through the day. Food production, workflow, and production records, you're going to see. This will help you order if it's done right. I love a messy production record, okay? If it's neat and it's written in the same penmanship on a slant at, on a table over here, I sometimes will call foul on that. And I would abuse the bad word, but I'm, I'm, I'm mic'd up. <laughs> I, I say that, that document is not true right there because it needs to have wet spoon stains on it and a splash of marinara sauce and five different handwritings on it. Because if I was the person that spooned up the applesauce and I opened six number 10 cans, and then I had to go back and get two more and do more because I ran out, I should have my handwriting on there that says six number 10 cans plus two and not just give the end of the day a sheet of paper among five or six other little scraps of paper for somebody to have to write that all down. There are no points for neatness on a production record, but there are points for completing it, completeness and for accuracy. Because here's the thing, I can tell you, that it's a law, we receive federal money and we have to keep it for three years plus one, but most of us start turning up and we're like, oh gosh, another rule. What I want to say, what's in it for you, is if you do it right, the next time it comes up on a cycle menu, it's going to help you order. Because you're going to know how many kids took pineapple versus mandarin orange. How many kids took the chicken nuggets versus the sandwich. How many kids selected the wrap instead of the chili. And you're going to be able to use those numbers on production to be able to identify what the appropriate order volume is. So the what's in it for you for production record is just that. Again, order guides. They don't need to be neat. They need to make sense to you. So if I see on there, Sloppy Joe, 40 pounds, 5.36 ounces, and you go, well, what does that mean? That doesn't mean much to me unless it tells me there are 160 servings in it. And then I'm going to take it one step further and say, make your order guide your cheat sheet and put that there. Because guess what? Sloppy Joe's is going to come back up on the cycle and someone else, if you're not there, might look at it and go, 40 pounds, 5.63, what is that? How much do I need? Right? Mm -hmm. And also, I'm going to go even one step further and say, what the heck is 5.63? We're not going to pull out that gram scale every day. But we do it once and we know 5.63 ounces of Sloppy Joe will fit in a number 10 scoop. So every time I have Sloppy Joe, I know how many servings in the case, and I know to pull out my number 10 scoop, and I'm good to go. I'm not figuring it out. I'm not wondering if I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right every time because I have the record, okay? The standardized recipe, again, when you go into a drive through restaurant like a McDonald's and get a Big Mac, you get a Big Mac because every time you get a Big Mac, it has that special sauce and that sh the shreds of lettuce and you, you get it every time and it expects to taste the same way because every time they have a recipe and they use it and they train people on how to make a Big Mac and that's what makes a franchise restaurant successful. Their costing is in order, their recipe is in order, their staff is trained and their customers are satisfied because every time I pull up on that McDonald's, my Big Mac is going to taste like a Big Mac, right? So if you have poor participation, it might be because when I come up, it's a crapshoot whether I'm going to get the same taste or, or style of food I got the last time if it's not standardized. Okay? It's not the same recipe and recipes aren't being followed. So very important. So for me, you're going to get a calculator in the next day, session. And Chris bought one for everybody so you guys can practice your math and do it. If I know that I have to order beans and I know I want 500 lunches, we all know an offer versus school, a serve, school kid children are not eating beans, and, you know, <laughs> they're not eating those 500 servings. So therefore, you don't order for 500 servings, and you don't make 500 servings, so you don't have to carry around those number 10 cans of beans all over the place, and then throw them out at the end of the day, right? Some things we have to offer in an offer versus serve, respect the choice of the student, and modify our production and our ordering <coughs> to not bog down our inventory, having things that we know we don't need, okay? And then here's the bottom line. A lot of us don't open, uh, think about it like opening up your own wallet or writing a check at Aldi's for your personal grocery store. But if you, you perhaps you, you shouldn't if you do, but you, none of us like to go to the grocery store and spend two, three hundred dollars and then at the end of the week throw out the produce we left in there to waste, right? You kind of want to use what you have, right? Same thing in schools. You know, somebody's writing a check and guess what? As a whole, the budget does affect everybody. The first person that affects is the student. Less money 
in the classroom because they have to pay for food service. And last but not least, what's in it for you is when you have these processes streamlined, you are going to reduce the time. So how many of you dread order day? Raise your hand, okay? Because it takes away. Because guess what happens on order day when the order shows up? You still have to serve all the kids breakfast and lunch, right? So this is a process. It's very cyclical. This is why this keeps going around in an, in an evolution here. You have a menu and you have a recipe. And from there, you maintain an inventory. A decent inventory, but not a, an over inventory. And round and round we go. So you have the knowledge of the menu. You have inventory control and management controls of that inventory. Be it a clipboard here, where you have people hash off what they pulled out so you know what you have in stock without having to walk all the way back in. Ordering what you need and needing what you order. So you are using evaluation tools like your production record and your forecasting, like your standardized recipes to understand. One packet of gravy makes a gallon of gravy. So every time gravy's on your menu, you don't need to order a whole other case because you have all of the other packs of gravy. So you have to kind of think through that stuff. And most of the time, our schools, we're struggling to find safe places six inches off the floor with good ventilation. So you screwed up your hassle too, right? So you kind of have to think about one step in the process can mess up several, right? So we're, we're thinking this as it's in motion. It's constantly evolving and in motion.